Okay, so this is the IFOS. It's a light spectrometer with a range from about 370 nanometers to 1000 nanometers, so it can also see a little bit into ultraviolet and well into the infrared. It comes with a sensor taken from a webcam which has a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels and that gives it a resolution of about 1 nanometer. It plugs into the USB socket on any Windows computer and is seen as a webcam. It runs some free spectrometer software, open source, created by the folks at the Theramino project. That software allows you to calibrate the spectrometer using a, a known light source. You can also analyze the spectrums that you're seeing. You can capture them, you can dump them as an um, XLS file and basically do your work. But you really need a webcam with manual exposure. Um, and the one I was using uh, became discontinued and was no longer available for sale and you can't now get a standard definition webcam with manual exposure. They're just not to be had. And that was the end of the IFOS. Well after extensive testing and some product development I found a replacement and this is the IFOS HD. It's identical in construction and in operation. The only difference is that it has an HD camera in it and that camera was not harvested from a, a webcam. The downside is I have to import them from China in quantity and they're a lot more expensive. But the upside is you've got twice the resolution. This is a full HD sensor, 1920 by 1080. That gives us a resolution that's much better than the standard IFOS. We also get glass optics and metal lens parts. That translates into more accuracy, more linearity and more stability in the instrument. This camera can also connect to non-Windows PCs which opens the door to using them on any platform where you can find suitable software. OK, let's compare the two models. We'll start with the IFOS SD. OK, well we've got the standard IFOS in there. It presents as a trust webcam. You can see its resolution 640 480. Here's the CFL. Turn off auto and adjust the Let's calibrate so we can orient where we where we are. So we're looking at the Mercury peak at six four at uh, five four six and the other one at four three six. Let's zoom in a bit and see if we can differentiate the terbium line here. Yes we can. See this line here is terbium, so you want to be sure not to calibrate on that, it's this one you want. Okay, so um, that's on there. This, as you can see, is a bit of a nebulous dome. We can improve a little bit on that by dickering with the, the uh, exposure. Okay, so it's now calibrated. And that's confirmed because this line is around 700 to 710. Um, let's just take a look around then. Well, firstly, the uh, the the middle group in the orange, take the trim scale off. So the gap between the highest peak and the trough next to it is what's that? Two, four, five to six. And that's not because this is really the way the spectrum is, it's due to smearing actually, um, because of the limited resolution and the plastic optics. Um, but it's perfectly adequate for some applications, so it just depends on what you want to do. Um, you know, if you're analysing light sources for use in um, indoor growing, then this is entirely adequate. There you're looking at PAR regions and you want to see what coverage you've got. You don't really want to know the nuances um, of inside, inside a, a complex like this. Let's take a snap for comparison later. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at this one which presents as more or less a single peak. Let's see if we can get any more out of it with the exposure. It's still a single peak here. Yeah, it's going to stay a single peak. OK, fair enough. And then this one down here, we already saw how a peak emerges there. Uh, and if you go further up, we can actually see, look, we can see one, two, three, four peaks. 
So there's the CFL, that's pretty much what there is to see for a CFL. Let's look at the um, the laser pointers. So that's, um, what is that, 6, 51, 52. So the wavelength is pretty much bang on. We don't know exactly what this laser pointer is, but IFOS SD is saying 651. Now we'll do the violet laser. And again, that's quoting 405 plus or minus 10. And we're reading 406. And lastly, with the green laser pointer, which it quotes as being at uh, 532. 533, we've got there. So they're all out by plus one nanometer. I think it's very likely that I miscalibrated at the beginning. Okay, we're on the HD model now. I'll turn on the light source, which is substantially cold. And bam, look at that. Look at the contrast, it's massive. That's because of the quality of the lens. Um, it's also much more stable and I don't recalibrate it as much as I used to with the standard IFOS. Let's explore a bit. This is the um, complex this complex around this area is not visible with a standard IFOS. And uh, finally we'll take a look at the lasers. Here's the red one. Trouble lining it up there with a slot. There you go. And then here is the green one. This is the green one. Same deal uh, with the standards as with the standards, but um, the, the, the sharpness is better because of the optics and the resolution. And finally, the violet one. And lastly, the ultraviolet one. 405. There you go. Well, there it is. I think that's all there is to say. The IFOS HD is just the same to look at and to use as the IFOS SD, um, but it's got uh, full HD resolution. It's got glass lenses with metal supports and mounts that leads to uh, better fidelity and better stability you can see much more you can plug the camera into a non windows platform which means if you can find suitable software remember this software only runs on windows but if you can find or write suitable software then you can take this with you to another platform now it does cost significantly more but it's a significantly better instrument and the iFOS SD is not coming back anytime soon so um, this is your only option if you want to buy something like this. It is available on Amazon and on eBay, but for the best price, because I don't have to pay those guys, you're better off going to my website and there's a link to that below. You're still protected by PayPal, so um, nothing horrible to worry about. Well, I hope you found that interesting and enjoyable, and thank you for watching.